Argentina came into the World Cup as one of the favourites, but then they lost their very first game against Saudi Arabia. But since then, they've been slowly picking up momentum. And actually, you might find that Argentina are slightly better than you think. And if you want to keep up with all of our World Cup coverage, then make sure you're subscribed to our channel. There's a bell notification that you can press on the screen below me. And if you get that, then all of our content will drop immediately into your feed. So this is Argentina on the board in front of me as we expected them to line up in the World Cup. And they played a quite interesting asymmetrical 4-4-2 formation. Now the reason I call it asymmetrical is because Argentina used two different positions to get width. So on the one hand, you've got Di Maria, who's gonna play as a wide winger. And then because of that, the rest of the midfield are gonna pull around. And Los Celso on this side is now gonna generate space for Acuna here, the fullback to get forward. So you've got width coming from a winger here, but then a fullback here. And the general idea then is that you're gonna try and create from these wide areas. You've got a striker who's gonna be around the box in the central area. Then you've got Lionel Messi, one of the best players in the world, playing behind him as a 10. But then this opens up two channels here that are gonna be hit by the two central midfielders. So Lo Celso, who's the wide player on the left-hand side, is gonna come a little bit more central. As we've said, he's gonna be generating space here for the fullback. Uh, and then Rodrigo de Paul on this side, he's gonna be attacking this sort of channel. And there's gonna be two different ways that you're gonna try and generate chances. One of them is you're gonna play this ball from Di Maria into the byline here. De Paul's gonna run onto that ball, get the ball by the byline, and then cut the ball back to the D, and then Lionel Messi is just really dangerous in these sorts of situations. Now on the other side, the fullback is gonna get the ball as a regular fullback, and he's gonna try and play these sorts of crosses to the center forward. So generating chances from the wide areas in two different ways, making the wide areas really important. But there's one problem with their plan, and that was this. Giovanni Lo Celso gets injured before the World Cup starts, and Lionel Scaloni, the Argentine manager, has a problem that he has to fix before the games even start. So against Saudi Arabia in the first game, this is how he attempts to solve the problem of Lo Celso. And that is this way with Papu Gomez coming in instead. They're gonna play pretty much exactly the same system. So Gomez is gonna come inside, Di Maria is gonna go wide. And the idea then is that you're generating space in this wide channel for Talia Fico, the fullback to get into the forward area. Martinez is gonna be in the box. Messi is gonna be behind him. And then you've got these two players here looking for the channels, Gomez and De Paul. But Hervé Renard, the Saudi Arabian coach, had done his homework and he realised that the wide areas were really important for Argentina. And what he did was quite interesting. He made sure that his wide players were man-marking their responsibilities. So we've got the fullback here on Di Maria, the fullback on Gomez being pulled inside. That creates the space for Taliafico. But rather than the wide player for Saudi Arabia over here, just allowing him to have that space, that player drops in and marks him really tightly. And it sometimes looks like a back five here. But this causes a problem for Argentina because they're not able to generate the chances they're looking to create from wide areas. They're gonna to have to do something else. They're gonna to have to try and go through the middle. But this is a problem because their central midfielders are pushing into the front line. They wanted to do these interplays with the wide players. Nothing is happening there. And so there's a lot of space in the middle. Paredes as well, the central midfielder is sometimes dropping out here just to cover Taliafico, the fullback. And so what we end up with is a really big space here that is not being occupied by anyone. And so if you're trying to build up through the middle, you're really gonna struggle. In the end, what we start seeing is Lionel Messi dropping in, helping in the buildup, but then he's being pulled further away from the goal. And he's the most dangerous goal threat that Argentina have. So this is a problem. Now, Argentina eventually lost that game to Saudi Arabia, but they had some of the same problems in the next game against Mexico. And the thing to notice about Mexico is that they lined up in a completely different way to the way they usually do. Usually they would have a 4-3-3, but again, Tata Martino, the Mexican coach, had done his homework, seen how Argentina struggled when they weren't allowed space in the wide areas, and he went to a back five. So again, we've got the same sort of issue here. You've got Di Maria on one side, Acuna, the fullback this time, on the other side, and then everyone else is getting piled up in the middle. They're not able to generate chances from the wide areas. And so you have the same problem again. How are you gonna create through the middle? Now this time there's a slightly different change in midfield because instead of Paredes, we have Guido Rodriguez. The problem with him was that he was uncomfortable being put under pressure in the center. So he was dropping out, the two center backs were pushing wide. And again, we have the same problem, which is this. Big space in the middle, no one to occupy it, apart from Lionel Messi dropping in. But again, you're moving Messi away from the goal into the central space, it's just a bit of a waste of his talent. So Lionel Scaloni has two problems to solve then. One is how do you generate more chances from the wide areas? And then the other one is how do you have more of a presence in the central midfield? Now in the Mexico game, he solves the second problem by bringing on Enzo Fernandez, but he's still got this problem of how to generate from the wide areas. And we saw some solutions to that in the Poland game. 
So this is how Poland lined up. They lined up in a full 4-2, just like Saudi Arabia did. But rather than being aggressive and pressing in the wide areas, they're going to be much more compact. They're going to sit in this sort of 4-4-2 block here. They're going to have two lines here. And what they're going to do is they're going to allow space in the wide areas here for Argentina to get into. But they're going to rely on the fact that they've got two big centre-backs here. And then they've got two defensive midfielders. So they're going to cover the forward make sure that he can't get any of those crosses we saw from wide areas from the fullback. And then they're gonna try and double up here on Messi and re reduce the amount of space around the D for the cutbacks from this sort of direction. So Scaloni had to find different ways to break down this low block. And actually the first way that he did that was really interesting because rather than trying to do it in possession through holding the ball and generating chances, he actually did it out of possession. So let's just take a quick look at the way that he did this. Now, out of possession, obviously, Poland are going to adopt a much more open structure because they're going to want to try and hold the ball and work it down the field. So you're going to see your centre-back splitting a little bit, your full-back's going out to the wide areas, and it generates just a lot more space. So if you can win the ball in that sort of situation, you're going to have a lot more space to attack to try and score. So what we saw from Argentina was that they adopted a really wide press from their forward line. So Di Maria is out here on the fullback, Alvarez is out here on the other fullback, and then Messi is sitting in the middle. And then what you have is your two central midfielders pushing up onto the opposition central midfielders. And the idea is this, so when the ball is with the goalkeeper, he's going to pass it out to one of the centre-backs. And because these two players are in wide areas, what they're going to do is stop the pass to the fullback and you'll have your other fullback up here stopping the pass beyond him. And the idea then is that the only really available pass here is going to be to the central midfielder. And so once the pass is made, this triggers what we call a pressing trap. So the central midfielder for Argentina is going to push up, and then you're going to see the other players around just pushing in, trying to win the ball back. And if you can win that ball back then, there's just much more space to attack through the central areas, and you can generate those dangerous chances in that way. So that was the first solution that he found. The second solution that he found was in possession. So what you have to do when you're playing against a really low block like this is you have to try and pull these players out of position so that you can then create space that can be exploited. Now Argentina used a few tactical ideas to really help them break down the Polish press. The first one of those is width. So what we've got here is Di Maria on one side, Acuna on the other, and they're right on the touch lines. They're generating as much space as possible between them. And the idea behind that is that you're going to start pulling the opposition back four apart. You're going to pull one full back towards Acuna here, one full back towards Di Maria here as well. And if you can do that, then you can generate spaces in between the back line that your teammates can really exploit. But this kind of pinning doesn't just happen across the pitch, it also happens lengthways as well. So one of the interesting things that was happening is that Di Maria was coming a little bit deeper. Now the idea here is that if you can get the ball to Di Maria and he's not on the last line of the Polish defence, this is going to mean that Berezinski here is going to push up and what you're doing then is you're generating some space in this area and this is the sort of area that we're wanting to see Rodrigo de Paul run into here and get to the byline so he can play those balls back across. So we actually saw this kind of movement played a few times during the game. The ball in behind with Di Maria pulling the full back out for De Paul to run onto it. And actually the first goal came from De Paul getting into this situation, playing the pass across the box and McAllister was here and he played the ball into the goal. And in the second goal too, we saw Argentina generating space in the middle by really smart wide plays as well. So in the course of the World Cup, Argentina have had problems posed to them that they've slowly started finding solutions for through the group stages. But it's important to remember that those teams that have caused them problems are largely underdog teams, and it remains to be seen how they will fare against some of the better sides in the tournament. If you liked today's video, please subscribe to the channel. And if you like TIFO, we think that you'll also like The Athletic. If you want the best news, features and interviews about the World Cup, the Premier League and European football, as well as loads of other sports, The Athletic is the place for you. And as part of our special deal, you can get it for £1 per month for six months. See the link in the description.